74, the distribution of the sample mean x bar. So we'll start with a theorem. If the population we are sampling from is normally distributed with a mean of mu and standard deviation of sigma, then for any given sample size, so sample size doesn't matter, x bar will also be normally distributed, which means the sample means are normally distributed. And it'll be that same mean and standard deviation from last section. Um, why do we care? Because now this means probabilities for x bar, the sample mean, can be found using the normal curve. Oops, area under the normal curve. So that's nice. We can actually do something with this information now. So let's say we have a random sample from a population that's normal. So yay, we can use the normal curve. And we have a mean of 195 and a standard deviation of 31.52. So this is the original data. And now we want to take samples of size 24 and find the means. So what is the distribution of the sample means? So we know the distribution is normal. X bar is normal. And that's because the population is normal. But let's also find the mean and standard deviation. So the mean of the X bars, because we're talking about X bar, is 195. It's the same as the population but sigma changes. So sigma of x bar will be sigma over square root n. So sigma is 31.52, and we will divide by a sample size of square root 24. I go ahead and calculate that, and I get, um, well, this one has funny rounding, so let's write it out. Six point four three, and then three nine will round up to four zero. So let's use this now that we know we can use the normal curve. Let's determine some probabilities. So we want to find the probability that the average is in between one ninety and two hundred. So this is the average, not an individual data value now, the actual average. So we're gonna use the new sigma since we're talking about sample means. Yeah, and so we know it's a normal curve. We'll do 190 to 200, right, in between, and we shade in between. And so since it's the normal curve, we'll go ahead and find z-scores. Right, we're basically converting it to that standard normal curve. So z-scores. So 190 minus 195 all over 6.4340. And then the other z-score will be 200 minus 195 all over 6.4340. Four, three, four, zero. Remember, we're just converting these to standard deviations, that standardized variable. So I get negative 0.777 for my first z-score. And then for my second z-score, I get, just typing it on the calculator. Same thing, but positive, 0.777. So we're on that standard normal curve. We've just converted the data to the standard normal curve. And then we can use the normal CDF to find area. So once we have z-scores, we'll find area. So normal CDF, negative um, 0.777 is my lower, and positive is my upper. Upper should always be the larger number. So second distribution, normal CDF of negative 0.777, upper is 0.777, enter. And we get a probability of about 5628. 
So the average, there's a 56% chance the average is in this range. So let's just see what happens when we change sample size. And then we'll end the video. So we're gonna do the exact same example. We're gonna find the distribution, but now for samples of size 84, we want the distribution of sample means. So the distribution is still normal. X bar will be normal because the population is normal, just like before. The average is still 195, but sigma will change because N has changed. So X bar is normal because the population is normal. Mu is still 195. The average of the averages shouldn't be changing, but the spread changes. It will be less spread out because we have bigger sample sizes. So sigma of X bar is the original sigma over square root N. So the original sigma was 31.52, the population, all over now square root 84. So that part changes. And we get a new sigma of 3.4391. So it's less spread out. This should be smaller than before. So let's see how that changes the probability. So for a sample size of 84, what's the chance our average is between 190 and 200? The idea here is it should be a higher chance because my sample should be more accurate. But let's see if that actually works. My average should be more likely to get the correct average or close to the correct average. So let's see if that actually happens. So we're still doing 190 to 200, but we get new z-scores because we have a new sigma. So let's find the z-scores. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do 190 minus the average of 195 all over the new sigma, 3.4391. And then we'll do 200 minus 195 all over the new sigma, 3.4391. And these are my z-scores. So why don't you pause the video and type those in? and then come back and I get negative 1.454 and positive 1.454. So we're still looking at that standard normal curve, but we're at different spots than last time. So last time I think we only made it to 0.77 and that's because again with smaller samples, we're just less accurate. This time we're gonna catch more data. So we're gonna go ahead and do normal CDF to find the area, we'll do my lower is negative 1.454, and my upper is 1.454. Go ahead and do normal CDF on your own. And I'm expecting something higher than that 56 from last time. And I get 8541 which is what I thought, I thought it would be higher. So that agrees with what my theory was. We had a higher chance because we had a larger sample. So because we have a bigger sample, we're more accurate, we're more likely to be within 190 to 200. I'll see you back for the next video.